So, oh, you still got it's still chucked up. I was going to say, take the uh, the drill and chuck up that countersink again, but it's already chucked up. So, demonstrating. Let's keep everything sorted in front of the camera. So this is kind of an eyeball thing, and I'm going to grab another. Uh, I'm going to grab a little screw mm -hmm. so that we can test it to make sure. But just countersink the edges because we're using little flathead screws. Some mm -hmm. people use um, <coughs> wait until I get the screws because I think that whole hole on the big side for the screws I'm thinking of. Be right back. So, like I said, they're already quite a bit smaller. Yeah, but we still need to countersink, so start it over here. So that could even use a little more so Pretty much, you're just going to countersink a little bit, and then you're going to test the screw. If uh, if I was making a bunch of these things, I'd set the stop on my drill press and just leave it clamped like it is with the block mm -hmm. and the pin, and then just you know put the countersink in there and, and set the depth. But that's good. So just just go ahead on the other three and just countersink them and test them and make sure they're down where you want them. Okay. All right, carry on. Hey, if you were going to show this video to the the guy that's in charge of your senior project, the people you have to answer to for your grade, mm -hmm. what would you what would you say was the the best part of making a guitar and what's the worst part? Um, the best part is probably seeing the shape of the guitar come to life instead of just being all four-sided. Mm -hmm. And then the worst part was probably the sanding to make it that way. <laughs> Everything is sanding. It's terrible. <laughs> Let me help. I'm going to take one of these screws and go find the drill bit. It's the right size for that. How's it going? I think it's good. You got them all? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's do a test hole for this screw and set it down here. Um, test hole. Make sure that the screw that we're going to use will screw into this without too much difficulty and at the same time won't get it too big. Oh yeah, I think that's going to be perfect. We always use the right screwdriver. Well, maybe that's not the right screwdriver. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that's perfect. We're going to wax them anyway. So, now, we're going to put, let's go ahead and get a little drip pen and, and punch those so that they, because that little bit is a lot smaller than the hole, so we want to make sure we get centered up in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a bigger one's better that way, sort of lay in the,
humbuckers, okay? Pick up Shibata called humbuckers. They don't need them. Just tell them, just explaining this for you and for the camera because we didn't do any um, shielding in the cavity here or in the pickup cavities. But they're humbuckers and we're not doing a split or anything at this point. So there's really no reason that they should hum. If it is an issue, you can always take stuff out and shield it, but kind of on a uh, time crunch thing mm -hmm. with getting your project done. It's also why it isn't painted. We just sealed it, but we haven't painted. It's going to be black when it's painted. Um, so the knobs here, oops, that's already open. These are long shaft pots. And so what that means is you have Send us a spray washer and look. Excellent. Okay, so you have, you're going to put a nut underneath, right, and then you're going to, See how far it comes you're going to, you're going to get this all lined up along with the star, <coughs> star washer under, underneath there. You're going to get it all lined up so that when it, when you are done with your washer and your nut, all you have are the thread just flush with the top of the nut, mm -hmm. right? So your knob's not sticking way up. So you got a little bit to do there, but you can go ahead and do those those two pots, kind of just point them at each other as far as the tabs okay. where we're wired up at, okay? And then this worked out really good. We just stick it in and, and put the nut on it and you're good on that one. First lug of the volume connects to the first lug of the, the tongue. of the tongue, right? And these connect the capacitor. Some drawings just have the capacitor going from the center lug to here. As long as it's going to a ground, and all I've done is I take the capacitor from here over to the ground here, which is kind of cool because I like to I like to run either a ground wire or the capacitor lead through the hole and ground it. Okay. A lot of times you'll just see this lug bent all the way back to the case and mm -hmm. soldered because this has to ground to the case. Uh, and then this one over here on this one never gets connected to anything in, okay. in a normal setup. Uh, all right, I'm going to get a little pair of needle nose. Extend the end of the wire, which just means you put some solder on it. Okay. A lot of people like to put solder on the joint they're putting together. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do that. So then I got to heat the joint up to get the wire through it. Uh, this is and this is the wire back to the volume pot. So it's just going to go through here. I also like to do a mechanical bond, basically, or connection. So put a little bend in the wire, stick it through the hole or holes in this case because it's a double tab thing. Mm -hmm. And I just bend it, bend it over, and then it's locked on there. I don't have my visor on, so I can't see what I'm doing. All right, visor down. Stuff getting blind. And senior, if you just want to keep an eye on that to, so we can put another card in there if we need to. Okay. All right, and so this is like... Nine hot. minutes. This is like really, really, really hot. So it's just pretty much on and off. 
can see the solder flow there. Mm -hmm. Don't blow on a solder joint ever because it makes it um, fail, can make it fail. All right, this was our bridge. Anyway, so we got, we have a common line that goes from, like I said, from the volume on the number one, and then depending on how you read these things, this would be the number three, because it's backwards. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. <coughs> so we're gonna give ourselves a little extra hookup wire there. Uh, it's good not to use more wire than you need because that uh, can be a source of humming. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, if, if you were really having to go like on the Les Pauls, where it goes up here and, and your switch is over here, yeah. you use braided shielded. Mm -hmm. so that you don't get that, because you have a long run like that, it'll definitely get on on you. All right, so we're, so we're gonna use that going out to the jack. Um, a lot of guitar companies just use a pair of wires and they just twist them because mm -hmm. that somehow helps with the humming. All right, we're gonna put that there, so we're gonna take another chunk of red wire These two, put them in the in that guy, and I'm not going to bend those. to the lug on the tone pot. Try not to melt the insulation off anything else while we're in there. Okay. Groovy. All right, I'm just going to push this down out of my way. And the same thing with this guy. Just going to push it down in here. So we know those are connected. Uh, capacitor is laying right over on the bench. Five minutes. All right. <clears throat> Was laying on the bench. Here we go. Probably gonna have you hold on to this while I do it. Normally, I have to try to figure out a way to get stuff to stay where I want. <clears throat> and uh, just clip it in there too. Oops, see how that, that works really well? Mm -hmm. Just fell over. Alright, so yeah, so go ahead and just hold that down there so it doesn't, doesn't go away. Alright, perfect. Now hold it still while it sets up. All right. So what does that do? The capacitor actually bleeds uh, high frequencies to ground, which, um, so when you turn your tone knob, mm -hmm. it gets lower, right? Yeah. In pitch or tone. Mm -hmm. So that way, oh, you know what we need? Anyway, that that's so that's what the, that's why that's doing that because you're taking your your highs and you're bleeding them, bleeding them off. You're actually grounding the whole thing out, but it, for some reason the capacitor only affects the high frequency. Um, well, let's just use a chisel. There should be a chisel. In there. Anytime I solder to the back of a pot, 
I, uh, I just scrape it so that it has a place for the solder to hook to. So any place I have grounds uh, on there, it'll do that. And that one will just tuck it right down like that. Awesome. All right, so now we'll go plug it in, make sure everything works. And then we'll put the cover on it, and we'll get the neck on, and we'll do all that stuff. So, Fred, if you want to zoom that camera around to the bench, or pick it up. So as of right now, that's a good sign. Everything's full blast. Uh, we just need something metal. It's on the uh, neck. The bridge. Nothing on the neck. On the neck. Nothing on the bridge. It's just transferring through. Awesome. Now let's do bridge tone. Neck tone. All right, we're good. So we'll get the neck on the thing and string it up and then.